the key member of a squad that has taken its club into Europe for the first time in their history, earning himself a big money move to Liverpool as a result, with the small matter of winning the World Cup thrown in the middle. The 2022-23 season was a special one for Alexis McAllister. We've all enjoyed his meteoric rise at Brighton, but what else is there to this midfield maestro? Find out here on Football Reality as we bring you 10 things you didn't know about Alexis McAllister. First up, let's deal with the breaking news. On the 8th of June, Liverpool confirmed what has been common knowledge for a few days. They were bringing Alexis McAllister to Anfield. McAllister has been on their radar since they decided against making a bid for Jude Bellingham, and they have agreed a deal which keeps him on Merseyside until 2028. In desperate need of plugging a talent gap in their midfield while on a tight budget, this looks like fantastic business for the Reds, who snapped up the Argentinian for just £35 million. He was expected to cost around £60 million plus add-ons, but for a clause in his last Brighton contract. That fee could have risen to £55 million, but considering Bellingham moved to Real Madrid just a day earlier for £88 million, Liverpool could have got the bargain of the summer. Fact 2. Where it all began Brighton have become a model example of how to run a football club, working their way up from the bottom of the Football League to the Europa League in a generation. But it's the recruitment where the Seagulls have impressed the most, finding talent across South America, Asia and Europe. Once they've sold players on for a tidy profit, they always have a perfect replacement ready to slot right in. Alexis McAllister is one of the brightest diamonds they've picked out of the rough. They plucked the then 20-year-old from Argentinos Juniors, one of Buenos Aires' most historic clubs, from whose academy he graduated. Brighton signed him in January 2019, but decided to loan him back to Juniors and then to noisy neighbours Boca Juniors, before he finally made his Albion debut in March 2020. That was the first of his 112 Brighton appearances, for whom he scored 20 goals. He proved how not only did Brighton recruit well, but also how not rushing a player straight into the team can do wonders for their development. 3. He comes from a true football family We don't know what makes the McAllister family gene so special, but we wish we had them. Alexis is the youngest of three brothers who all came through the ranks at Argentinos Juniors. Francis McAllister is a midfielder with Rosario Central, while Kevin McAllister, no, not the kid from Home Alone, is a right-back still at Juniors. Their father Carlos won three caps for Argentina, playing alongside Diego Maradona, while his brother Patricio played in Argentina, Mexico and Japan. With that kind of pedigree, is it any wonder Alexis has become one of the season's brightest talents? Fact 4. He's Irish What? He's Irish? Okay, well, kind of. Alexis and the rest of the McAllister family are from Santa Rosa, a town 600 kilometers west of Buenos Aires. However, both he and his father have mentioned in interviews that they are descendants of people who traveled to Argentina from Ireland, and it turns out those ancestors can be traced to Donna Bate in Fingal, just north of Dublin. The name McAllister is a slightly adapted version of McAllister, a common Scottish name, so it's no surprise that a dig into Alexis's roots also found links to Fife in Scotland. Unfortunately for the Irish and Scottish fans, those ancestors were too far back in the family tree for him to have been eligible for the boys in green or the Tartan army. In fifth, Messi stopped the bullies. The Celtic ancestry would not be a shock to anyone who saw Alexis's dad in his playing days. Carlos was well known for his ginger hair and was even nicknamed Colo, Spanish for ginger. There is a real reddish tinge to Alexis's locks too, and when he first met up with the Argentina squad, his new teammates tried to get the same nickname going. But Alexis wasn't so accepting of it as his father had been, but his shyness meant the squad didn't stop. To the rescue came none other than Lionel Messi, who simply said, he doesn't like to be called Colo, so don't call him that. And that was it. Such is a respect for Messi that that was all it took for the teasing to stop. 6. World Cup Winner McAllister made his debut for Argentina's senior team in September 2019, but that would be it for a while. In the summer of 2021, he went to Tokyo for the Olympics with the under-23 side, but they were knocked out in the group stage. His international career got going properly in 2022, 
when he was recalled to the now South American champion squad in January, eventually earning his first competitive cap in March, but was an unused substitute in the final Isma win at Wembley. He was included in the 26-man squad for the World Cup, but was not included in the shock loss to Saudi Arabia. That loss to the Saudis was a blessing in disguise for Alexis, and perhaps Argentina too, as he was brought in for the Mexico game, and from then on, he and Argentina never looked back. After beating Mexico, McAllister scored his first Argentina goal against Poland and started every game en route to the final, where he provided the assist for Angel Di Maria to finish off the beautiful second goal. Argentina survived the French comeback in an incredible game, but Alexis got his hands on the trophy to become the first Brighton & Hove Albion player to lift the World Cup. Number 7. Changing Clubs and Girlfriend Celebrating on the pitch in Doha with Alexis was his girlfriend Camilla Mayen, a model and influencer who lived with him in sunny Brighton. The pair often shared pictures of themselves on Instagram, enjoying Brighton Beach and spending time on the famous pier. But it seems the happy couple are no more, as just last week, before jetting off to Liverpool, Alexis attended Lautaro Martinez's wedding with a new girl, Aylan Kova. To add spice to the story, it appears that Kova was a close friend of the heartbroken Mayan. Mayan still has pictures of her celebrating with McAllister at the World Cup final on her Instagram. Perhaps she still has plans of winning him back. You and us both, say the Brighton fans. At 8. His modest lifestyle McAllister doesn't post too much on Instagram that is not football related, other than the aforementioned strolls around Brighton. His house there was apparently in a quiet, comfortable neighborhood, but was nothing too outlandish. Of course, he will be house hunting again now in the northwest, with some reports of him already splashing out on a two million pound mansion. As for cars, he's said to have a couple in his garage, a Mini Cooper S for everyday drives to training, and a Porsche 911 Carrera for a bit of style. Let's see if that collection grows once the first pay packet from Anfield arrives. Number 9. Tevez gave him confidence Meeting Lionel Messi was a dream come true for McAllister, who said he went bright red and wasn't able to speak when he first met the GOAT, but it was another of his heroes who helped convince him he'd made the right decision to join Brighton. Growing up a Boca Juniors fan, McAllister was overjoyed when Brighton sent him out on loan to La Bonera, and he was able to link up with former Man United, Man City and West Ham legend Carlos Tevez. Unsure about whether the Premier League was the right fit for him, Tevez sent McAllister on the right path, telling him about how he adored the Premier League, the English people and everything about the country. McAllister took Tevez's words on board and the rest, as they say, is history. And number 10. Mate Man McAllister stayed level-headed after winning the World Cup, perfectly summed up by this quote, My life is the same boring life as always. I train, I go home, I sit on the sofa, I drink mate, I watch football. It's the same life. But yeah, I do get recognized more, that's true. Some of that might be understated, but one thing is for sure, McAllister loves mate. Like all Argentinian players, he drinks a lot of the famous herbal tea, but Alexis takes things to the next level. He lives off the stuff. In the recent BBC documentary, Lionel Messi, Destiny, McAllister was one of the players that featured heavily. Interviewed in his house, he was never seen without his mate and Calabash, as if going 30 seconds without a sip would make him lose all his footballing powers. He definitely won the award for being the most Argentinian Argentinian. So much for being Irish. There you have it. 10 cool facts about Liverpool's new star, Alexis McAllister. What else do you know about the awesome midfielder? How do you think you'll get on at Anfield? Let us know in the comments and make sure you like this video and subscribe to Football Reality. See you next time.